All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook your PlayStation 4 controller up to your PC using the built-in drivers inside of Steam. So to get this to work, all you got to do is open up Steam, make sure it's up to date, then go to Steam, and then go to Settings. Inside of the Settings panel, you've got these big list of different tabs here on the left-hand side. Go down to Controller. And then we have two options to connect our controller to our PC. The least laggy way is to plug it in with a cable. Uh, so that's my recommendation. If you'd like to plug it in with Bluetooth, open up your Bluetooth settings on your Windows PC. Make sure it's turned on. If you don't have an on off switch, you might not have Bluetooth or it might be Bork. So update your drivers and make sure you've got one installed if that's the case. Um, from here, grab your controller, press and hold on the PlayStation logo button in the center between the two joysticks and the share button until the backlight starts to strobe like you're at a dance party. Once it starts to blink rapidly, click on the add Bluetooth or other device button here at the top. It's the big plus. And then a little black pop-up will appear. Click on Bluetooth at the top and the PlayStation controller should show up as wireless controller. It's super generic and I wish they would label it, but they don't. Up oh, there it is. So we'll go ahead and click on that and that'll allow us to pair it. Then we're done. You should get a bunch of little like dings and pop-ups in the corner of your screen to be like Windows is like, hey, you've got a new device and we're getting it all set up for you, champ. After that, you can go back to your controller panel and at the top where it said no controller connected, it should say that you've got a PlayStation 4 controller or if you're in the case like me, I named it forever ago in big picture mode and it's called Larry's Swanky PS4 controller now. So the main settings to worry about here are turning on or off the game rumble. You can test the device inputs to make sure they're all working here in the testing panel. This is great for making sure your controller is functional and if there's something weird about it or something's behaving funny about it, uh, this some can tell you if it's the controller or some kind of software having problems on your computer. Because controllers wear out. It's good to know if they're, if they're screwed up or not. Uh, you can check the calibration and advanced settings here. And then the mainly what you want to worry about down here is, uh, the PlayStation controller support tab. This is a little pull down tab that has three options, not enabled, partially enabled, or fully enabled. This is what controls how much of your PlayStation controller gets to pretend like it's an actual PlayStation controller. So starting out with not enabled, this will treat your controller as a generic USB or wireless controller. It will use the Steam inputs to translate all of your controller's inputs into Xbox controller inputs. And this is the one that is the most compatible with all games. A lot of games don't like the PlayStation controller, so if you have problems, leave it turned off to not enabled. Uh, the next one is partially enabled, which is called enabled in games without support. This is basically halfway between. This will recognize this as a PlayStation controller, but it will not use any of the fancy PlayStation features or characteristics like the touchpad in the middle and it will convert still all of your inputs into an Xbox game input when the game doesn't support PlayStation controls. Games with PlayStation controls do seem to fully kick in and utilize this with this option. The last option is called Enabled. You get the full feature package with this controller in games that support it. That means it'll display PlayStation buttons, it will use the gyroscope and the extra, you know, back paddles if you've got them. And you can also use the touchpad to function as a mouse inside of the game. Otherwise, the only other setting that might be interesting to you is you can turn on or off the guide button cords for controllers down here. You can turn on or off guide button focuses steam up here. And then down here, if you find that there's still some funkiness going on with your controller and you want to experiment with using different setups or different button layouts, you can use the desktop layout option 
to play around with the layouts for other controller setups that other people in the community have put together for different games. This can be kind of helpful if your controller is like weirdly behaving like a mouse when it shouldn't, if it's clicking around funny, using a different button configuration in here might help you out. For the most part though, most of what you're gonna want for fixing and tweaking settings is just this single pull down here. If your game's not behaving itself when this is set to enabled, try partial support or not enabled. I usually run around with partial support, but in games like Helldivers, you can get away with using enabled because it does in fact support a PlayStation controller and it tells you on the game screen itself. So that'd be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been how you hook up a PlayStation 4 controller to your Windows PC using Steam. Most of it's pretty automatic. So that'll be it for this one. Have a good one. Don't forget to do the likey subscribe thing. I will try to answer any tech support questions you may have in the video description below. And that'll be it. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.